What is going on guys? Marcus here with the Reformation Woodshop. Today is a very pivotal day in my life. My daughter is transitioning from a crib to a toddler bed. So I am taking on the task to make a bed that I feel is worthy for that little princess of mine. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a traditional toddler bed. I'm gonna be making it out of maple, but if you're following along, you can make it out of any wood species that you prefer. I will have a set of plans available for this build that you can get so you can follow along and get the dimensions down to the inch. This is a build that I've been looking forward to for a while and I am so excited to knock it out of the park. If you enjoy this video and you feel like I've earned it, please hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. All right guys, so the first thing you're gonna see me doing for this build is breaking down the lumber that I got. This is eight quarter maple, which just means it's two inches thick. And I'm gonna have to break it down so that I can take it to my miter saw and the table saw and get more precise cuts there. So the frame for the headboard and footboard is gonna be two inches by two inches squared. So since this is already two inches, I'm gonna go ahead and set the table saw for another two inches. And when I run it through, they'll be perfectly square pieces. The pieces I'm cutting out here will make up the posts of the headboard and footboard and the rail that goes across to secure each post to each other. You'll see that here in a second whenever I set everything out and get a mock-up of what it's gonna look like. I'm just laying these out to get an idea of what the footboard will look like and the headboard. Because this is maple and it is a little bit of a harder wood, my table saw blade burned a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and sand now before I join anything together. That way there's no burn marks on any of the pieces. The next thing I'm gonna be cutting to size are the slats that will go inset into the headboard and footboard. Those are gonna be maple as well and they are gonna be mostly one by fours with a few varying sizes that'll be just a couple of inches. After ripping them to size with my crosscut sled, I rip them down to their final dimensions by running them long ways through the table saw. I make sure to take off a little bit on both sides so that there's no rough sides on any of these boards before they get to their final dimension. Before moving on to join the headboard and footboard together, and because I'm cutting and ripping a whole bunch of wood already, I decide to cut down the sides. These are the two pieces that will join to the headboard and the footboard to make the whole thing square. Just like with the earlier slats, I'm going to make sure there's no rough edges on this board by running it through the table saw just to joint the edges. It is not a perfect way to do it, but it works. Then, because I actually need this board to be a little bit taller, I'm going to cut out a piece of wood from another 1x4 that I'm going to glue onto these sides so that I have that extra inch of height at the end of this build. I know it's confusing, but don't worry, you'll understand later. So this bed is actually unique because it's designed to help your kid not roll out of it. I'm going to mark out the lines here where I will be taking away material and leaving material. A small portion of the sides of this bed are made to be taller than the mattress so that if your child rolls into them, it will stop them from rolling out of the bed. But the bottom portion of the bed is made to be accessible from either side. So the height of the side pieces on the bed will be a little bit lower than the mattress. So you can see here, everything above the pencil line will be gone and everything past the pencil line, the vertical pencil line, will stay and exist as the actual stopper from falling out of the bed. There will be a nice little round over here so that it's not a sharp point or anything like that for your kid to poke themselves on. If you saw my last video, you'll know I just got the 720 Pro, so obviously, after unboxing it, I gotta use it. I'm going to be using pocket holes here to join all the parts of the panels that will inset into the headboard and the footboard 
and then I'll go on to use pocket holes to join the headboard and footboard all together with all the posts and the rails and the panels. So, if you don't like pocket holes, turn away now! Run! Run while you can! That is the panel that will inset into the headboard, and that is the panel that will inset into the footboard. One thing I will say about pocket holes is they're not perfect. So if you feel like your boards are unlevel or the panel is not as flat as you'd like it to be, sand it. Sand it down and you can make it flat. Now I am maxing out this Craig jig with the two inch posts that will make up the frame for the headboards. Pocket holes all day, baby. Now that it's time to join everything, I will mark five inches from the bottom, and that is where I will start with the first rail that makes up each of the headboard and footboard. Okay, so in order to set the panel into the actual frame of the headboard, I'm just putting these spacers here, and they will sit on those spacers. I'll clamp everything down tight so that it sits exactly three quarters of an inch off the front of the headboard and there'll be probably like an eighth on the back. Just a little bit of a recess so it looks nice and complete. If all your cuts were accurate, it should fit snug like it does here. I even use my mallet to uh, wedge it in there nice and tight. All right, so the panel is inset. Now all that's left to do is to put the top rail on. You wanna do that last because uh, there is a specific measurement for this panel, but who knows what your boards are actually going to come out as. So if there is any slop, like a 16th or something like that, uh, you won't have to cut anything down. You just put the top rail on and call it a day. What's that? It's your, part of your bed. After finishing the footboard, I moved on to the headboard, which I didn't film because it's the exact same process, but here it is. There's the headboard. It's almost there, but you get the idea. Looks good. So I told you earlier that you'd understand the little strips I cut for the sides later on. Well, now is later. I'm gonna be gluing these strips to the side pieces that I cut previously because I needed an extra little bit for that top part, which I'll refer to as my rollout wing thingy. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna be working on are the sides of this maple bed. Um, I am going to be figuring out how to do this slow round over taper thingy. I can tell you three or four different methods, but I'm gonna show you the easiest possible way because that's what we're all about. So, how to make round, precise cutouts. Grab something round, trace it, then cut it. The end. So just like that. So for that long straight cut that I need to take out of the top of the side piece, I use my table saw to get myself almost there and then I take this hand saw and cut off that excess so that I can take it over to the scroll saw and manipulate it a whole lot easier. The scroll saw is not necessary for this part of the project, you can use a jigsaw or a bandsaw, whatever you've got, but I like to use the scroll saw because it can handle the work. Now I'm going to cut some slots for pocket holes to join the sides to the headboard and the footboard. Excellent! For the rail that the slats will sit on to hold up the mattress, all I did was split a 2x4 in half and secure it to the sides of the bed. Now that you have made all of your puzzle pieces, it's time to put it together. The easiest part of the process. The bottom of the side of your bed should be five inches off the ground, just like the footboard and the headboard are. You can clamp everything together unless you're extremely strong like me and you can hold it in place and drive your screws. 
This project was made in collaboration with Craig Tool, and if you're interested in seeing plans for it so you can know every single dimension, if I wasn't clear enough in this video, you'll know exactly what you need to do to make this bed. You can find those at buildsomething.com. I will leave a link in the description down below. You got a surprise? Where is it? This. No. Look behind you. You love it? Yeah. Thank you. Lay down and go to sleep. No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't mention finish because I am not a stickler for finish and I just use linseed oil. You can use whatever you are interested in. Any kind of clear coat will do. Please don't stain maple. Just, just don't do it, okay? All right guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I really enjoyed making this bed. I hope that if you decide to make it for yourself, you enjoy it too. This video was made in collaboration with Craig Tool. I wanna to thank them for making this video possible. There are plans for this bed on their website, buildsomething.com. If you wanna make this bed, you can find plans exclusively on their website. I will link that down in the description below. If you made it this far, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.